The Cygnus cargo spacecraft is now in the neighborhood of the space station. It is within 1,000 meters uh, that you just heard a NASA astronaut, uh, Jasmine Mogbelli, speaking to our Capcom today. She is the assist for Laurel O'Hara, who will be the one to robotically capture the spacecraft today. This coordination is important because while we have all kinds of data on the cargo spacecraft and what we can see on our data screens, uh, the actual visuals of the astronauts are, are important in this mission. The spacecraft will not be docked to the space station. This means that Cygnus will not park itself into an available port. Instead, it will undergo berthing operations. The robotic arm operator, NASA astronaut Laurel O'Hara, will capture the spacecraft at the controls of her robotic workstation. Then she'll hand over control to the robotic arm specialists here in Mission Control Houston. Go ahead and two, Marcus. Uh, first, the payload laptop 3 was connected to the power chain, so that was intact, but the computer was turned off. And I assume that it was remotely switched off, because I have not uh, touched it since the, orbit, or the orbital detector yesterday. Muting from station. I also want to report that the um, and Marcus Munich with the UN2. So um, that the laptop payload laptop three was off is probably due to uh, uh, battery empty. And so yes, uh, please turn it on again for us. And thanks for reconnecting it. And there we have it, live views of the Cygnus cargo spacecraft. Uh, just a moment ago, earlier our NASA astronauts confirmed that they had visuals. They were able to um, see with their own eyes outside of the station cupola windows at the spacecraft. And uh, indeed, we see it on our camera views as well. That's the Cygnus cargo spacecraft. Uh, no people on board, just cargo. We've got 8,200 pounds on board uh, there at the center of your screen. The International Space Station is flying over the southern coast of Africa at the moment, and that is what you can see sort of through the clouds below the Cygnus the cargo spacecraft. Here, so and there it is on your map. Battery remaining, so I don't think the battery was thrown, uh, but it's not charging, and the, uh, the brick uh, 1442 is powered on, and the output power light, uh, LED is uh, lit green, and uh, the, um, the power cable for ZBook is connected, so I don't know why it's not charging. And we copy, Marcus. Uh, please let's move over to Space Ground 3 to keep 2 for Cygnus. In less than two and a half minutes, the Cygnus cargo spacecraft is set to perform another burn. This is just to further fine-tune its position uh, to the International Space Station is, and is the last major burn of today's operation.
Cygnus now closing in on 550 meters away from the International Space Station, and a burn is about to begin soon. Station Houston, for all crew, Cygnus TriDAR viewing constraints now apply. To prevent potential eye damage during Cygnus approach, cease using binoculars and DSLR cameras with uncovered viewfinders. Captain. The station has what's known as a common berthing mechanism. It's an attachment system used to mate segments of the U.S. side of the space station to visiting vehicles like the Cygnus cargo spacecraft. The common berthing mechanism is the installation port that Cygnus is guided into by robotics officers. There are hooks and latches to begin the process, and that is followed by the spacecraft being bolted into place. Here in Mission Control, the OSO mech, or the Operation Support Officer, directly oversees operation of that common berthing mechanism. This Cygnus will be installed into the Earth-facing port of the station's Unity module. One of the advantages of using a common berthing mechanism is that large equipment and cargo can easily fit through the opening. Just a short while ago, the Cygnus cargo spacecraft performed a uh, final burn, uh, finer major burn, to get the Cygnus cargo spacecraft um, into place uh, set for a robotic capture. Uh, the command to initiate this burn is sent by engineers in Cygnus's flight control room in Dulles, Virginia. Uh, we are in joint operations right now. Uh, this means that Mission Control Houston is working collaboratively with controllers in Dulles, Virginia on coordination of the burns and preparedness of the station crew to capture Cygnus for, for installation. The spacecraft is uh, nearing into 400 meters away from the space station, but once it reaches 250 meters away, or about a tenth of a mile, it will stop approaching the space station. It will be commanded to hold at this 250 meter mark for a little over 10 minutes, and the two mission control rooms will pull go, no go on this if, if the spacecraft can continue to move in. This is expected and planned part of our schedule today, and this is because the space station has an invisible boundary called the keep-out sphere. This keep-out sphere is a 200 meter radius, um, 200 meters in radius or 400 meters in diameter. You can get kind of a good view of that on your screen there. Uh, sphere, a uh, perfect sphere around the space station, and it's one of the several safety zones for visiting vehicles like Cygnus. 
a green main power LED. Copy, Satoshi. That's a good configuration. So before moving within this keep out sphere, Cygnus must be configured so that it would not cross that boundary for at least four orbits in the unlikely event that the spacecraft lost its, lost its maneuvering capability. Uh, Cygnus is uh, inside 400 meters away from the space station, so there's a little bit of time before Cygnus reaches its next milestone, milestone at that 250 meter hold point. In the meantime, why don't we take a look back at how the spacecraft got here in the first place. Cygnus's journey to space began on a sunny, sunny Tuesday afternoon earlier this week. The spacecraft launched at 12.07 p.m. Eastern Time. That's 11.07 a.m. here in Houston on January 30th. Cygnus lifted off atop a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket from the Space Launch Complex 40 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station in Florida. It was an on-time launch for Northrop Grumman's 20th cargo resupply mission, and the first time a Cygnus cargo spacecraft has launched on a Falcon 9 rocket. You can see a recap of Tuesday's launch on your screen here. This is not a live view. The spacecraft went on to go through its post-launch milestones as planned. It separated from the Falcon 9 spacecraft with no issues and went on to deploy both of its cylindrical solar arrays a little less than three hours after takeoff. Um, it's been making its way to the space station ever since. It went on to perform a number of delta velocity burns, some lasting up to 16 minutes, others lasting just seconds, all with the goal of fine-tuning the spacecraft's position in space to bring it to the space station. Mission Control Houston and the Northrop Grumman control room in Dulles entered joint operations, and about an hour and a half ago, both gave a go for another set of thruster firings. Um, as you know, it did the approach initiation burn during our coverage today, and then another burn just a few minutes ago, and both uh, performed nominally. The space station is inside 350 meters away from the International Space Station, again working towards its next milestone of going to the 250 meter hold point. Uh, we heard a little bit of chatter earlier with our NASA astronauts. NASA astronaut Laurel O'Hara is leading today's capture operation, backed up by her crewmate, NASA astronaut Jasmine Mugbelli. They're both stationed inside the station's cupola at the robotic workstation, and there are a number of tools at their disposal for a good capture this morning. So first they're in the cupola. That's the part of the space station that has huge windows, and Mogbelly will serve as a second set of eyes for O'Hara during her capture. We've heard her call down to the ground uh, a couple of times today as O'Hara focuses on her capture operations. They also have three monitors and can route various camera views and data screens to give them different perspectives while grabbing Cygnus. Uh, sometimes we'll take those live views as well. Oh, you're looking at it right now on your screen. I want to bring your attention to the center right side of your screen. You can kind of see VV to ISS. That's visiting vehicle to ISS. Cygnus, of course, is a visiting vehicle. And you can actually see the number go down. It's 321 meters away from the space station and going towards that 250 meter hold point. So in addition to those three monitors with their camera views and data screens that they have, um, in addition to a number of controls right there in the workstation, they do indeed have what looks like a video game joystick. Uh, this operation is part of their astronaut training here in NASA's Johnson Space Center in Houston, Texas, where they can practice these controls in a simulated environment. But they also can practice uh, at the real robotic workstation before Cygnus arrives to get a refresher on the controls while they're in space. And this is something that both Mogbelli and O'Hara got to do earlier this week on the station.
Cygnus vehicle is now within 300 meters of the space station. Um, it's expected to get to its hold point in less than five minutes from now. We expect a call to the crew when this happens. So as Cygnet makes its way to the 250 meter hold point, Cygnus will seemingly like stop in its tracks. But of course, it's not quite holding still. It's orbiting the Earth at thousands of miles per hour. But the rate that we're talking about is in relation to the space station. So it will not come any closer to the station than 250 meters. Like we talked about earlier, this is a good checkpoint before the spacecraft can enter the keepout sphere. The keepout sphere is 200 meters away from the space station and it's an invisible safety marker. As long as Cygnus is outside of this boundary, we know that the spacecraft uh, would not come any closer and damage the station if something were to go wrong. Flight Director Diane Daly in the room here with us in Mission Control Houston must give the go after polling her team before the spacecraft can begin to close in again. We're now less than one hour away into our planned capture of Northrop Grumman's Cygnus spacecraft this morning, but it's important to note that capturing the spacecraft is just the first step in the process. Once Cygnus is in the grasp of the robotic arm, the astronauts have completed their job, uh, but the work then continues. It turns to the robotics officers here in Mission Control Houston to install the spacecraft. They will control the robotic arm from here on Earth using a camera that's looking out the Harmony module's hatch window as a guide. 